Hey everybody, this is Tim Hepworth again here with Fly Fishing Bowl Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying, and I'm here to bring you another quick tie. We are going to be tying the Juan Kryptonite Caddis, this guy here. We want to thank uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for bringing you this quick tie today. Uh, I'm going to be tying out of my Season 5 kit. It looks just like this. If you want to still grab one of these things, you can sure do it. Go over to our website, www.flyfishingbowriver.com backslash TNLS5, I got that right this time. Um, and you can pick one up today. So what your kit's gonna look like, I'm pulling out episode four, looks like this. Okay, you're gonna have two patterns in the back. We are gonna grab the one right there that says Juan's Kryptonite Caddis. We're gonna get our materials ready and head on over to the vise. Don't forget, as you just saw there, to like and subscribe to this video. We appreciate knowing that you were here. Drop a comment if you're part of the replay squad and uh, let us know you were here. Okay, this is what this guy looks like. This is what we're going to be tying up here. Um, pretty simple caddis pattern, but has some kind of a little bit of tricky things to it. Some of the feathers aren't something you may be used to um, working with. So we're going to get that guy out of the vise. We're going to grab our size 14 Daiichi 1120 hook. We're going to get that black bead from your kit affixed to it. Okay, I'm going to come in here and get it put into my vise, good and secure, like so. I'm going to be tying with some brown colored UTC 70 today. Okay, something a little bit thinner. Could go black, could go olive. Doesn't really matter. We're not really seeing the thread on this fly. Just something a little bit smaller. I'm going to come in here and start my thread just behind the bead. Work my thread up. I'm going to go ahead and snip out the tag. End of that thread. Now I'm going to take some thread wraps kind of all the way back, just to the edge of that bend where the barb is. But then I'm going to come and bring my thread back. Okay, I'm going to bring it back. So it's sitting about that halfway point on the hook. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna go over and grab the first material we're gonna be working with. This is gonna be the body of the caddis, this nice kind of minty colored green, soft looking body. We're gonna build it out of some chenille. So to protect the chenille and to make sure that it's not gonna erode or come apart or anything like that, we're just gonna grab a little lighter, okay? And we're just gonna burn just the very end. If you ever worked with this, this type of chenille before, it also creates kind of a nice little point on it, kind of points out the body, makes it even look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so when I come in here to tie this in, the length that I'm looking for is if I were to overall take the length of the hook right there, okay, by bracing off the front of the eye, and then I transition that to the portion where I'm gonna tie in at the middle. See how I did that? Measured off here, got the overall length, and then pinching with my thumb and finger, set that right there, that creates the length that we want. I'm gonna switch hands, do a gathering wrap for that chenille. I want to keep it right up on top of the hook. Okay, take a couple thread wraps, check my length. I like it, it's where I want it to be. Take a couple thread wraps forward and I can go in there and I can snip out the rest of that chenille. Just make sure you're cutting the right end and then finish securing the underside of it. With some thread wraps all the way to the bead. So that's what we're left with for now. Okay, only two more materials to put into this one but this next one might be something you haven't worked with before. CDC feathers, okay? This comes, well, for lack of better words, it comes from a duck's butt, okay? Or a chicken's butt. Um, this is a very, very movable, um, basically fibers on this, on this feather, but they're delicate, kind of hard to work with at times. Um, we're gonna tie it in at the tip of the stem, and then we're gonna try to work this forward, palmering it forward. You're gonna see there's a differing length. Some of them are long, some are short. I'm gonna break some off because I want a certain length. I don't want this to be super, super long. But I kind of stroke these back so they're out of the way so I can expose just the very tip. And I'm gonna bring my thread back to where I tied in that chenille. And I'm gonna tie in that stem right there. Now you have a couple, you should have quite a few of these in your kit. Um, so that way if this one breaks, because sometimes they do break and it, who knows, it could happen to me as well. If they break, we can always tie in another one, okay? So just wanna make sure we get that stem really locked in. We can worry about the stem in a second here. And now I am gonna go grab some hackle pliers just because this is very delicate and the stem is quite small. And I'm gonna grab on to it. Don't tug too hard or you definitely could break this. And now we're just gonna work on palmering this forward. And some nice open wraps. So I wanna make sure I don't trap any of those because every single one of those little fibers is important. I'm just going to palmer that forward towards the eye of the hook. And when I run out of feather, oh, you can see there it came off the hackle feathers because they are also very slippery. Go ahead and grab it again. 
Try to make as many wraps as you can as you go back down the feather or back down the fly, using up just about all of, all of that feather that we can. But you're gonna realize if you pull too hard at any point, you are either gonna break the stem or you're gonna slip off your flyers. Now I'm gonna come in, take a securing wrap behind, securing wrap in front. Okay, so I should be good and secure there. I can go ahead and trim out the edge of that stem, like so. So now you can see I have kind of all these differing lengths here, but before I do anything else, I just want to take a few more securing wraps right behind that bead and back a little ways, making sure I got that stem firmly secured. And now I'm going to push all these fibers back with my fingers and kind of grab that tail in at the same time. So you can see I got a measurement going right here and all of these that are out beyond, I'm just going to grab and pull. Okay, they break, they're quite brittle. I'm going to pinch them a little bit so I get the desired length that I want. You can see there, I didn't want them to extend too far beyond the back of that uh, body portion. So I just went in there, I want a little bit more off those ones. Just pinch and pull, just like that. Okay, now we've only got one material left and it's a real simple one. We're gonna grab this beautiful hair's ear dubbing. I love this stuff, it's, it's literally as natural as you get. We haven't changed the color, nothing. Um, it's got all those guard hairs in it, which we're gonna utilize here in a moment as well. Just kind of separate it once so you can see some of those guard hairs and then grab a little pinch that's got a decent clump of guard hair in it. Okay, something like this. Switch my hands over and I'm going to make a little dubbing noodle. Okay, so I'm just going to spin that. Remember, moving my fingers always in the same direction like that. Spinning that, just a short piece, inch and a half long or so. And I'm going to start my thread right where I left it, where I left that CDC. And I don't, I'm not going to put a ton of pressure on these wraps. I'm just going to move forward. Once I've used it all up, I have a little bit extra. That's totally fine. I'll pull that off. It comes off easy. And then a couple of thread wraps just behind the bead. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish this off where it is. Do one more. I'm not going to worry about resin on this guy. I don't want to mess it up in that uh, all that nice dubbing we just put in there. I'm going to trim this out of the way. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of work with a dubbing brush, also known as my Velcro. And I'm just going to stroke that dubbing just a little bit rearward. And what it should do is it should blend in, come off just a little bit. Don't get too vigorous with it. We don't want to pull it all out. Just blends that little bit, gives us this beautiful looking fly, the Juan Kryptonite Caddis. You're gonna to wanna to try this one out a few times. Try it in some different sizes. This is a number 14, probably our most common size that we're gonna attack with. You can try a different color of the body, even go with a brown or a tan, uh, but definitely a great pattern. All right, everybody, again, this is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Vision, Bow River Outfitters, and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell, it'll notify you anytime we put out a new video, which is every week, so you don't wanna miss any of them. Uh, thanks again to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for bringing this quick tie, and we will see you next week.